I want to touch on analytics, which is a golden word to a lot of folks and still a little bit of a scary term to some people. You have a background in scouting. You have a lot of experience in the analytical side of this field as well. I'm sure you had a balance in your head of how you wanted to compare and contrast those two when you took the job in the three and a half years you've been here. Has it been the kind of analytics versus scouting balance that you thought has one maybe taken more of a role than you might have imagined? Yeah, it's a good question. I, I, uh, I continue to use my uh, basic scouting background very heavily. Um, I don't like the word analytics just because it's gotten so cliched um, and uh, people get sick of hearing it, but it's such a, it's probably the best one word that we have to, to summarize uh, what we do, which is use data from statistical performance, but now more than ever from these machines that are around ballparks, both professional ballparks and college and even high school ballparks that track the movement of the baseball and in some cases the bats and in some cases the players themselves. And when we have all that info, we can compare it to what's actually happening on the field, whether the, the pitch that is thrown is swung and missed at or whether it's hit 420 feet, and we can glean all types of predictive information that'll help us make better future-oriented decisions in a very data-driven way. And um, when you have that stuff it, and you use it um, with discipline, it tends to beat out um, modes of decision-making or modes of um, predicting the future that aren't as data-backed or based in, in th that type of methodology. But somebody who has a scouting background or is a good player evaluator or a good set of eyes is able to very quickly and with uh, maybe much, much less uh, footage, so to speak, um, get in the ballpark of making the right decision about a player. And it's, it's very useful and convenient to have at your disposal. Um, and it's a good counterbalance uh, to um, just kind of being myopically focused on data and it, and it helps you tether to common sense. What's an example of that? What's an example in, in your time here of common sense in-person scouting, identifying a player that you had and developing that player or maybe identifying a player you didn't have and acquiring that player? Um, well, I think, uh, uh, for instance, uh, when we first got here, um, Brandon Hyde, who's our manager, but is also comes from a player development background. He's been a farm director. He's been in the front office. He's got a scouting skill set. I remember him very vividly, um, you know, seeing John Means in spring training in 2019. We had no idea who he was, really. He was basically added to the Orioles roster at the end of 2018 to kind of get through a grueling September, and they needed pitchers that they were calling from home from their minor league system. And he liked him. He thought he was big and competitive and was throwing strikes and had a pretty good changeup. And it's just a very, uh, you know, short snippet of, um, of observation um, that ended up pointing us in the right direction and kind of channeling our attention to a player that probably if you were just looking at the stats or the data at that point in time, it wouldn't have caught up to what he was about to do that year. Um, so using both to cross-check one another tends to um, lead to um, sounder overall decisions, but this is a business in which you're trying to predict human behavior. You're fighting against 29 other teams that are really, really smart. You, you tend to make some mistakes, but over time, if you have a good discipline and a good process and good info at your disposal, you'll, you'll move in the right direction. We're taping this before the Yankee series. A couple of days ago, the Brewers were in town. During one of the games in the ninth inning, I looked down and you're there in the front row watching the game from about as close as I think any general manager will come. Uh, a lot of GMs will stay up in the suite or stay up in the office. You have all this information at your disposal. Why is it important to you to be that close to the field? Well, that time in particular, I was trying to position myself to get into the gate, into the tunnel after the game. Uh, before. So you had an ulterior motive. <laughs> <laughs> but while I'm there, I do like to watch the game, but I don't play it a lot. I like to go to amateur and minor league games and uh, get the experience behind the plate that I'm used to from 15 years of scouting and kind of match it up with things that we see. But also in that particular game, it was Devin Williams and Josh Hader at the end of the game. Uh, it's kind of uh, fun to see what the hitters see in that, uh, in that spot. It was a tight game. More fun for you than the hitters, I would think. Very much more fun for me than the hitters, and I'm glad I'm not up there facing those guys.